cracking jumping action look forward to this weekend at Ascot and of course up at Haydock. The season's first grade one of the year is the Bet Fair Chase, and it really is cranking up a gear, Joel. Yeah, cranking up a gear, as you say, Matt. Um, I'm about 25 minutes away from um from Haydock here, and apparently it's good. The ground is good, which means we're not even swimming. You don't even need a boat to get there today. It is officially good, which is good. I've never heard this before, this time of year. Good ground at Haydock. Unthinkable, isn't it? Unseasonable, that's for sure. It might not suit Bristol to my luck. Let's look at the race. Bristol to my looking for his fourth win, looking to emulate the great Cato star. We've got Imperial Aura looking to bounce back. Next destination with Paul Nichols as well. Roper guy, the ground might not suit him, but I know the favourite one of your horses to follow for the season. Yeah, I mean, straight after last year's Gold Cup, I had the uh, the early treble on of the uh, Betfair Chase, uh, the Lexus, which is now the Savills Chase, onto the Gold Cup. Uh, so I put the treble on straight away there. Uh, Aplutar, the first leg is almost in. Now, many people are saying as well, um, is it three times uh, beaten first time out as well? Uh, the Irish don't tend to come over here um, for the Betfair Chase. But why... Why is this horse, a decent horse, Aplutar, coming over, um, bothering to get Rachel Blackmore over as well? Why, why are we coming over if we're, if we're just having a, having a laugh today? Um, I, 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 I can see, loads of people have said, first of all, very, very short price. We'll go off um, favourite, obviously. Um, Bristol de May looking at the fourth winning of this, um, coming up 10-11, but this this is his track. Um I have not met anybody over the past week that I really think that are brilliant minds in the game who say that Aplutar is a good bet. Everyone's going, you what? Three, four, five to one, maybe. Because you're getting, you know, three places at this point. At, at those sort of prices, what? 11 to eight, six to four, whatever. Uh, it's got to go off. I, I, I genuinely am going against everybody. I think this is an absolutely cracking bet. There we are then, happily tired, yeah. I know you've been big on him uh, for a while, second in last year's Gold Cup and an ideal starting pace. And you think he'll win over Christmas and the Gold Cup as well. So it's all about happily tired uh, for Joel. Now, a bit more competitive is the race before the, uh, the Betfair Exchange Stayers Handicap. Now, this is always a good race. to produce some top quality stays in recent seasons. We've got it, if the cap fits right at the top of the weights. But this is a cracking renewal. I mean, you can give each the 16 a chance. You mentioned the Irish before. We've got one sneaking in right down the bottom. I am looking at this race last night. Now, um, I'm probably looking at a 14, 16 to one shot here. And did I leave you out? Not on the Christmas card list, Matt, but did I leave you out? Nick Gifford, JP McManus. Uh, goes on better ground. And just to reiterate, the ground at Haydock is good and it is actually good. It's not one of those uh, lies. Um, if you look at the races, um, that he's ran in a nice race at Newbury. I put here a uh, beaten half a length by Stony Mountain, um, which I believe is still also in the race at this point. Uh, Chepstow uh, went two miles three, but was staying on towards the end, beaten by uh, Orby's Legend by length there. Only cost JP around 22 grand. This horse, the upgrade of the jockey bus booking is Niall Houlihan is off, and Kevin Brogan, I think is fantastic, is on. Never been to Haydock before, everybody's ridden the horse. Um, but for me, at 16 to 1, I think it's a really, really cracking each way bet. Uh, did I leave you out? May not be good enough to win. Uh, and also, any thoughts on the David Pipe horse here? <laughs> Which one? He's got a few, hasn't he? He's got Brinkley, he's got Martin. He absolutely loves this race as well. Yeah, yeah. He wants to win this race. I I, I made a note uh, last night, uh, Brinkley, David Pipe, uh, any money comes and it goes on the softer side of good. Um, I would I would tip that up as well. But, you know, for a bit of fun, 16 to 1. Did I leave you out? JP McManus, Nick Gifford, famous colours. Uh, let's have a little crack at that. Yeah, I won't leave out Martin either, David Pipe's other one. Even Base Rock, another form of his, uh, Carl Alwyn's been franked. And uh, Ryan Mann is quite sweet on his chances as well. Uh, are you going to Haydock this weekend? I was going to go Haydock this weekend, but unfortunately I've changed my plans because my mum's up. And uh, I'm like, I want to go and see our Plutar at Haydock. And she was like, sorry, that was just foreign to me. And I'm like, it, it's, it, it doesn't, don't worry about it. We'll go out for a Chinese instead. You know what I mean? So I will be watching it on ITV at the weekend. Best laid plans and all that. Let's move on to Ascot then, because they're also in front of the ITV cameras. The 205, just grade two, Chanel Farmer Chase. Lots of these on the comeback trail. Joel Deffy just saw him. Master Tommy took a Benny's King, pulled up last time out. None more so than lost in translation. But there'll be no more emotional winner if Dash Dashel Drasher gets the job done. 
Yeah, Dashiell Drasher, um, thoughts go out to uh, Matt Griffiths, of course. Rex Dingle taken over. Um, four from four at Haydock. Um, sorry, at um, is it Haydock or Ascot? Four from <laughs> four at Ascot. Ascot specialist, obviously. Um, people can look at Jeremy Scott and say he's not in form. He's never in form and, uh, you know, pops up. Um, this would be a really, really, really beautiful winner. However, and please don't walk out on me here. If I say Defi de Soy, you're going to look at me and go, what do you mean? I mean, lost in translation, we'll get lost on the M6. Let's be honest about that. Uh, Defi de Soy on the comeback trail. Now, Philip Hobbs had an awful season last year. Uh, and you look at the two-week stats, it's uh, six from 44 wins, but loads of placed efforts, loads of horses running really, really well. And Sporting John at the weekend, they fancied that horse, was back, did win. Um and that gives me a very similar profile to Defi de Soy. Now, he's not the old Nicky Henderson, Philip Hobbs, of bringing horses back. He's, you know, he's, he's not got that pedigree in him. But but I just think it's turning a corner. It's turning a corner. You always say class is permanent. And Philip Hobbs is always up there, you know, as a kid for me, you know, with Martin Pipe and, and, and people like that. And Defi de Soy goes well fresh. Uh, what have I made here? Tingle Creek, Clarence House, uh, Slur Chase, Triumph as well. I mean, for me... Defi de Soy would be one of the stronger bets the weekend for me. But of course, the emotional winner would be Dashiell Drescher, Ascot Specialist. Yeah, of course. Thoughts go out to Matt Griffiths, of course. He joined us head of Cheltenham this year and sadly, serious brain injury, that car crash uh, last month. Uh, right, we're on to the two Ford in the Coal Herd. the five go here. One last year by song for someone. He's back for more. We've got the enigmatic Goshen, which Goshen's going to turn up. We don't know which side of bed he's going to get out of. And of course, this is out of which winner, Buzz. I know many people fancy for the stays hurdle come March. First off, we're going to do some knockers here. We're knocking Buzz. Um, the same, I looked at this this morning to try and get some sort of context here. Buzz is the same price as Southampton are to beat Norwich this weekend. Just, just, just think about that. Think about that. It'll probably go off around even money, 11 to 10, something like that. Um, if Goshen turns up, I'm not sure if Goshen will turn up. If Goshen turns up, Goshen wins. I think the horse is a bit of a head case. The, the you know, there's the excuses, the, the, the Cheltenham thing that went off, obviously never going back to Cheltenham whatsoever. If Goshen wins, far too much speed for Buzz. All right, Buzz Weatherson, uh, Savara, Savara, I can never say that word. So that, 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 you know, that one I'm talking about. Um, but for me, I, I, I just, Buzz, hype horse, you know, I, I stay as hurdle. Not, not for me whatsoever. Um, I know we don't talk about laying, but if I'm bet Fred, I'm laying this horse to whatever price you want. Watch him hack up by eight lengths. I could not have buzz on my mind at four or five to one. I could not at all. If Goshen turns up, Goshen goes from the front, absolutely um, pounces buzz into the ground. There we are then, Goshen. Ground? No ground worries? Uh, not really, because I think uh, uh, the horse is nuts. Um, <laughs> You're I, right, he is. You know, you know what I mean? It's... I've looked through these. We can make excuses. We can, you know, the, the whole situation of Cheltenham and the freak incident and whatever. I just think the horse is uber talented, but a little bit not there. You know what I'm saying? A bit like me when I get up in the morning. <laughs> I don't like, like, yeah, like to say. If Goshen turns up, uh, too much speed for Buzz. Uh, let's move on to the 315 Ascot as well. This is a high-class two-mile handicap chase. And some of these won't be out of place in graded company. Sky Pirate won the Grand Daniel, the Moon of Gold. Two from three at the track and before midnight. Very impressive when beating Sky Pirate at Cheltenham last month. Yeah, and we, we we put up Sky Pirate around four or five to one last time, and we we said it went our favourite as as we predicted. It's not after timing, and the money was down. This was uh, before midnight's uh, Gold Cup. Um, Sam Twist and Davis, brilliant. Uh, up eight pounds for that last win. Um, we said it was the best bet of the weekend uh, a few weekends ago, whatever that was. That was the day. Now. Getting the vibes from the camp um, this morning and last night that, look, the horse will be trying for its life. They think this is a really, really, really good horse who could step up, but the eight pounds might be might be it. They got the reward last time, uh, was given a cracking ride. Um, so I would I would be against um, Sky. Uh, I would be against her before midnight. Have a look at Sky Pirate. Right. So on a marker 159. <laughs> Some people think it's a bit high. I'm not. I'm. Uh, I'm not sure myself. Um, done as well at Cheltenham before. Nick Schofield uh, gets really well with that horse. Um, but th 
it can become a bit of a bridal poser. We have talked about this before. One of those sorts is not so much like Archie Ball, but one of those where you, you don't know what, what is left and what you're going to find off the bit. Um, so are we looking a little bit further down? Because there's got to be value to be had. And we did mention off air that if Sky Pirate won this, we'll be handicapped out of the Grand Annual. That'd be right. You want to be, be looking at Grady Company for sure, yeah. So if, if I own that horse, I'm not sure A, I'd run, or B, I I might want to um, be out the back somewhere. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? Because you know, I, I'm just I'm just looking at what what my tar- what my target is. So for us, does that mean we're getting value for putting a line through before midnight, putting a line through uh, Sky Pirates? Uh, what about the cock? Monsieur Le Coq, second last time at Tremuda Gold, turn that form around. Yeah, uh, it's it's probably for me. It's, it's a no bet race, but I think uh, Monsieur Le Coq uh, would probably be a little play for having uh, if my mum's over and we're having a couple of quid whilst watching the TV. I'll probably go for that. Like if before midnight hacks up, then you've got Sam Thomas got a really good horse on his hands. Sky Pirate turns up and wins. Well, we don't know where we're going next. Probably seen the, the last of that. It's not a hunt ball, is it? That horse. Um, but you know, from here, yeah, I think we'll go Monsieur Le Coq. A bit oh, of value. Give, give us your best bet of the weekend. Right. If I say Daffy de Soy, are you going to really shout at me? Uh, yes. it's, it's just for me because people have laughed at me all week. Um, it, it's on the comeback trail, and gone, if you can put that out, you put you can put Lost in Translation up. No, I think it's the the whole Hobbs thing coming back into form. Um, the place horses, the the horses that are running really well, uh, the Johnny horse at the weekend, uh, Sporting John, uh, stuff like that. It, it, it's I I I I, I really do think. Uh, that this will get Daffy de Soy back on the right track this weekend. And I think that is my best bet. Daffy de Soy then, the back on track. He's certainly got the back class, that is for sure, to win uh, the Tour of Fire in Ascot this afternoon. Thanks to Joel for joining us. Loads from Joel over across our social media platforms, looking at all the ITV races uh, this weekend. Wherever you're back in there, the very best of luck.